Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are still at Indie Bio Demo Day number eight. We are now gonna be talking to Marcel Frankel from Gavilon Biodesign. Hi guys. Thanks for coming on, Thank really you. appreciate Thanks so it. Marcel, teach us about what you were just giving your talk about. Well, so, drug design today is a extremely challenging field because even when we design great drugs, Right? Even when we design drugs that work, the problem is that over time, either cancer or infectious diseases, they learn to become resistant to that therapy. Right? You, you might have heard of the superbugs, right? and in cancer, you always hear about cancer coming back. Right? So what happens is that this is called durability of the response. Right? So what we talk about is durable response of the drug. And the problem is that it's extremely difficult to make drugs that are durable. And the reason for that is that the, there are numerous ways how a pathogen can develop resistance. At Gavilon, what we do is we develop drugs that can play a chess match. And a chess match can see what moves, right, what mutations the pathogen or cancer can do and design a drug that can overcome those. So it's really about being able to design drugs in the fourth dimension, right? Being able to play a, a chess game through time. And that really makes a huge difference on how good and how impactful these drugs can be in people's lives. And what we're focused on is in designing better drugs, right? Um, so, so that's what I was talking about there. Um, the other main problem of drug design is that sometimes the biology tell us, tells us that we should go after a certain target, right? There's something in the system that that's what you really need to hit if you want to make a difference. Unfortunately, it's normally extremely difficult to hit those targets. So what we're making is a technology that can really allow us to hit what we want, not what we can. And hopefully by doing these two things, we'll change the paradigm of drug design, make better therapeutics, and finally start curing some of these diseases. And so then let's, let's walk us through examples. So usually there's a, like a, a pathogens or cancers are, they're, like you were giving us this example, they're running through permutations of ways for them to succeed with what their yes. intention is. And then to be able to figure out how the body tries to watch and, 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 t and tackle it as, so it's kind of like you said, there's a game going on. Yeah, there's a, exactly right. You know, so the truth is this, what you're finding in the end is evolution. Right, there's that saying, life finds a way. Mm. Right, so what a drug is, is a selective pressure in an environment. Right, you're selecting against things that are susceptible to the drug. Right, so you're creating a enhanced fitness for the organisms that are immune to that drug and you select that population. So what we need to do is we need to be able to see what those possible selection mechanisms are, what those mutations are, and design a drug not only against the target today, but against all possible variations of that target. And that's what we use our you know, unique proprietary in silico technology to do. So, you know, and what we hope to do is that that's really gonna have an impact in people's lives. And do you take it then, the pathogen or cancer, you take that into a uh, into, uh, into an environment um, outside of the body and then you uh, observe the way that it's trying to permutate and, and make advances and encounter those? No, so, so this is really cool. It? It's all done computationally. All computationally. All computationally. So you can simulate a cancer or a pathogen that's trying to make moves. You can yeah, simulate we, we do this at the molecular level. At the molecular level. Yeah, and okay. so, so that's why we, we, you know, we've spent um, the last, I don't know, 15 years at Duke building this technology. And, um, you know, we finally decided that it was time to spin that out into a company and really go ahead and use that technology to have impact in people's lives. And, you know, I think this comes from um, our personal experience uh, with these diseases and, you know, losing loved ones um, and really wanting to do something about that. You know, just, um, I have a, you know, for me, um, it was my mom. Uh, she got pancreatic cancer, and at first the drugs worked, and then they stopped working. And we went to five different doctors, and we, you know, said, hey, what can we do? And the answer was, look, uh, 
the disease has progressed. That's the word they use. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, you know, and it was like, no, right? That's an unacceptable reality. That's not the world we want to live in. So unfortunately for my mom, there was nothing we could do. But I think what everyone in the Gavilan team is trying to do is make it so that, you know, for the people today and tomorrow, that, that, that scenario changes. And take us into the environments where you're actually able to, to do this, to simulate this, because this happens to so many of our, like you said, of our loved ones that would love to pass more time with, let them be more creative, let them flourish more, experience more of civilization's progress over time, all this great stuff. And then, okay, when you bring this into this, to this simulation environment, then you're doing this at the molecular level, and how would it, I mean, this sounds so, you know, let's, let's try and make this like as explain like I'm five as possible. Okay, you have this pathogen in the environment, and you're, and you're figuring out its moves, and then figuring out how we can do so, what within the body to yeah, combat so, those so, moves? So, so, you know, think about, we really think about these things called proteins, right? And the proteins are kind of the work horses in your body. They're the, the things inside of you that do the work so that you can live, right? They're these almost tiny machines. They're these biologic machines inside of you. And normally, when you're developing a drug, you're hitting one of those, right? But because they're the ones that do the work to allow you to live, hitting them modulates that environment, right? Modulates that work. So that's how you can change the environment and change, you know, treat a disease or, you know, help somebody that has some condition, right? You change that by messing with these micro robots, these biological micro robots. Once we find the one that we're targeting, what we initiate really is something almost like a chess game. You know, in a chess game, if you're gonna play well, you gotta be able to see multiple moves ahead, mm. right? And when you're planning your next move, you, you have that context that you're using to make your decision. Yes. This is incredibly more complex because it's multi-dimensional, right? It's not just you have a few, right? So, but it's pretty similar mm -hmm. in what we're doing, right? You're looking at what are the fitness conditions of that protein? How does it do its job? How can it maintain its jobs? What possible variations of that shape can it adopt? And how can a drug deal with all of that, right? And those are the answers that you ask and you really require very sophisticated algorithms to answer. And that's what it's all about. And it's, so then is it the protein that's within the pathogen that you are observing its yeah. evolution and trying to see which moves it's trying to make? And then, the, and then you're trying to design the drug that would then compete against that, the evolution of that protein. Interrupt, yeah, interrupt, interrupt whatever it. function, or you know, sometimes you're enhancing a function, sometimes you're shutting it off, right? There's multiple ways to deal to try and modulate that, that environment. But what you're ultimately doing is if it's a pathogen, you wanna stop it in its tracks. If it's cancer, you wanna stop it and kill it. You know, and if it's another condition, then it's more, um, you know, sometimes you wanna increase something or decrease something, right? Um, you can think about autoimmune diseases, right? Where it's the body's immune system. There you don't wanna kill anything, you just wanna you know, calm things down a little bit. Um, all of these can be modulated by designing better drugs. And, you know, that's really what we want to do. It's not only about toxicity, right? We actually want to design drugs that are going to help people, right? Make people healthier and live longer. And, you know, especially as I was telling you, for us, it's about making sure that people are really having better lives and not losing loved ones to these diseases, right? Um, you know, cancer is almost like the boogeyman, right? When you're young, you believe in the boogeyman. Um, once you start getting older, the boogeyman changes its name, right? Every time that you feel a lump that wasn't there, in the back of your mind, you're like, well, you know, maybe it's something that shouldn't be there, right? Um, and if you have experience with it, you know that sometimes it's like that. One day you're fine and one day you're not fine, or someone you love has it through that. So having something that can treat that, that can overcome that, that's really all we're about. 
you know, I'm so fascinated with the simulation environment of analyzing the, the protein's uh, evolutionary trajectory and how it's trying to c uh, have its, uh, what it wants to achieve done within the body and how you can then simulate the, the drug, the, so you're simulating the molecules that are then competing against, yeah. and you're also trying to deliver it directly to where that protein is for it to get either inhibited or yep. um, to co have to enhance something that competes against it, this something style like that. thing. Yeah, exactly. This is so freaking cool. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yes, yes. I, we, we, many, a lot of why we call the show simulation is because of really cool things like this. Like all these different aspects to these biological simulations that, I mean, in many ways, like that civilization and the universe could be similarly within our bodies. We can recreate these simulation environments to see how we can tackle pathogens um, without even doing it outside, like taking it, having to do it outside of the body, but actually just simulate it. And yeah. Then, yeah, you know, we do eventually take these and test them, right? Because um, still today, right, um, no simulation is perfect. But the idea is to get to a point where, you know, whatever you're predicting is coming true. And the most exciting thing, the thing that really took us from being academics um, to being here and, you know, is that idea that, um, you know, we're almost there, right? We're starting to see these things. So um, I'm actually still an academic, finishing my PhD right now, but, um, you know, we're starting to see these results where what we predict is what's coming true when we test it. And when you start seeing that, it starts giving you a lot of confidence that you can actually change people's lives. And that's, that's what it's all about. Right, so it's about bringing about change. And then you guys get, make the, um, the simulations better and better, make the, the drugs compete better and better, and then the idea is to deploy one to, comp to actually for the physical use in human yeah, bodies. Yeah, exactly. And which one would that be to compete against? Do you guys have any ideas? So uh, we, we, we work in two different ways. One a way is that we work through partnerships where normally a partner already has an initial molecule um, that he's trying to optimize and we help them optimize, optimize that. It, okay. The okay. other one is we have our own pipeline. Okay. In our own pipeline, we're using our unique ability to design custom and ideal drugs to target drugs that other people can't. And there's a whole yeah. class of proteins called undruggables. Undruggables. Yeah, and, and they, they, they're kind of like, you know, sometimes called the holy grail of uh, uh, medicine because we know that they're important. We validated, you know, using things like CRISPR assays, and we validated that they matter. And yet, we, we haven't been able to hit at them because they've remained undruggable, that's the name, right? They've, they've been resilient to other methods. So what we wish to do is show that we can hit them. And by doing so, that would really change medicine and would change what we can do. Um, for the first time, we wouldn't be able to hit what we can. We would be able to hit what we want and that's going to really make, you know, bring in a new age of uh, medicine. So we're very excited for that. Okay. Okay, cool. It seems like, yeah, the trajectory is, um, yeah, both having the um, uh, organizations that are currently trying to figure out how to better deploy their own um, drugs uh, yeah. and working with them uh, computationally and also on the, um, with your own pipeline of exactly. drugs to make. And you think the pathogens to compete against are, which ones for you guys first? Do you so... Think? You know, personally, we're starting pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic. Exactly, right? As I told you, this is, um, you know, a decision made um, from personal reasons, right? The, you know, as I told you the story about my mom, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, you could call it avenging going on, right? There's this idea that we saw how terrible that disease is. And, uh, you know, I don't think, I think it's terrible that anybody has to go through that. Right, um, so we wanna start there. Um, but we're gonna expand, and with partners, um, we're doing both uh, infectious diseases, like the superbugs, okay. as well as uh, cancer. So, going both ways. Okay, and then uh, the, for, for, for a company trajectory then, for people that are uh, wanting to work with you, what are you guys looking for right now? Um, so, right now, we, you know, we're very fast, so it takes us about three weeks to go from the beginning of a project to the completion of that project. So the drug design process takes three weeks in our computers. So, 
and that and that includes the whole thing um, from hit all the way to what's called a lead which is you know from a very initial design all the way to something that we think is going to work um, so we're always open for more pharma companies to partner with us so that we can help them develop better drugs as well um, you know we always the, in truth, we want to have the biggest impact we can. So we really want to work with everyone we can. Um, you know, and in, in the uh, bringing in more talent, you know, the thing that's most important for us is people who believe in a vision of a world where these diseases are under control and treatable. And, you know, we don't have these super bugs bringing in epidemics, right? It's about having a shared vision about what can be done through these technologies, coupled with the skill to make it real. And I think that's what we would be looking for. Yes, yes. And then what would be like the simulation environment that you're um, working in? Like what is the software that you So use? these are proprietary softwares. That you guys made? That, that, we, that we built, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so, so yeah, so these are all proprietary software. They build from a open source software called Osprey okay. that we uh, help develop as academics. Okay. Um, so, um, for instance, I have publications using Ospreys. My co-founders developed Osprey, um, and this was all developed. So we all come from the same lab, uh, which was Bruce Donald's lab at Duke University. We are a spin out of that lab, and then that lab they developed Osprey, which is an open source version of this code. And what we did is we introduced new features, redesigned pretty much everything from scratch. Um, hmm. made it about a million times faster Whoa. and you know beyond that also introduced some new things that were required um, to make it in a pharma context something that would be successful in a pharma context and um, you know just continue to build con you know the technology we have a belief that we're great today but you know these diseases are a huge challenge and you have to continue pushing the technology so that's an area that we're all very dedicated to. It's continuously building the technology to solve these problems. I'm excited to see where um, simulation software can help us not only with like digital twins of the body and being able to um, run calculations of, of, uh, of preventing a disease pathology, this type of stuff, but also uh, doing things like uh, making digital twins of the planet and uh, simulating the evolution of our whole species, all these types of things. Simulation environments are very fascinating. I'm glad you guys are leveraging them for this. Marcel, thank you very much for coming thank you. on. Really I appreciate, appreciate it. it thank you so thank much. You, thank thank you. you. We would uh, greatly appreciate everyone to give us your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. Also, do check out the links in the bio below, Gavilon Design, Bio Design. Also, definitely check out the links to Indie Bio as well. Check out the links to simulations. We'll support these artists, these entrepreneurs, these scientists, um, these leaders in our community. Support them, help them grow, and go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Peace.